All right, guys, so we're here at the UK Games Expo, and we have got quite a treat for you from the guys at Valak Games. I'm here with Yaro, who has been telling me all about these amazing projects they're working on. First of all, bring the camera down here to one of John's favorites. This is U-Boat, yep. which is looking absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you. For anyone who hasn't seen this, can you tell, us, tell everyone what it's all about? Um, we call it um, Underwater Cooperative <laughs> War Thriller. And Sounds think, absolutely amazing. Yes, because it, and, 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 and actually it solves an alpha player problem as well in cooperative games because you, you just put the guy in the, in, the, in the shoes of a captain and then whatever he decides will happen or not, depending <laughs> on how the crew is efficient. Um, it is, uh, it is a, an app assistant game and yes, you need an app. However, the app is being served by all platforms that has been also been uh, released on uh, on computers so you can have windows and you can have uh, or ios so if you don't have a smartphone you can you can play so, with the computer so as we're seeing it here is it's sort of represented on the laptop you can yeah, play yeah, on yeah, laptop yeah. You, 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 you can get it on a laptop as well it's on steam so you can get Brilliant. it there it's all there um you know we, they I, I can only tell you the reviews we're getting and the reaction of reaction of the of the of the of so called public so the players is is over what we've expected, <laughs> I think. It, it's, it's re we're really glad we've picked up this design, this design when it was, and it published this as Phalanx. Um, it, it keeps you, you know, there the were the way voices that actually, you know, the immersion is so, so amazing and, and, and not expected that, you know, that. The hairs are rising on different parts of your body, depending <laughs> when they do, or where, where, depending on where you have them. <laughs> um, that was ex actually an expression of a Polish reviewer, a lady who was that's, playing that's it. That's great. And, and, and women, women playing the game, and, and they love it. Uh, one of the tricks is actually when there is a silence on the boat, the app is measuring the sound, of the level of sound, the sound of the level of the sound in the room. Yeah, yeah. So if you if it became noisy, that those destroyers will find you. This is how far we go. With. That's so cool. Yeah, it, it is. It is cool. You know, it, it's not. I don't have enough words to describe how I love it, and uh, how I'm glad. How, how glad I am as a publisher to have it in my portfolio. You know, so every, every time we've seen this game at the different shows we've talked to you guys at, it's just got that little bit little better in like quality as it's come towards production and every single time John's been like I want to play that game I want to play that game yeah, and then he finally got to do it as well it, so. it is it is kind of fun you know because uh, uh, many years ago I said like look we're in a business where we have all these sweaty guys you know coming all this <laughs> all this like where are the girls where are the girls and you know what with the game that I the least expected to be attractive to women we have women players Perfect. everyone is excited Everyone, at, at, depending on the level of your skill as a gamer or your skill as a U-Bot player, you will find a, a place on the boat. Because if, you, if you're not into... Um, well, my son, for example, he said, I want to be the first officer. Why the first officer? Because that, that person works with the app, of course, yeah? <laughs> so he, he's 10 he years gets old the tech. He and gets he has to be first officer. However, you know, more... Um, advanced players would love to be a navigator because that's plotting the the course of the boat, the speed, you know, making decisions. Uh, the chief mechanic, he's running all around this boat with tools and trying to fix things. Amazing! If you've seen the uh, series on the on the uh, on the on the uh, water uh, warfare, yeah, yeah. you know, that's bot. This recreates. You you can be part of it. That's awesome. And from Co cooperative. Yes. We also have competitive, which is coming to Kickstarter quite soon, I believe, yeah, as well. In, in uh, what? Twelve days. Twelve days, something like that. June so, the tenth. So this is calendar. So this is Europe divided. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah. So Europe divided. You know, I come from the uh, from the part of the world which was behind the Iron Curtain, and I was glad to see it going down. And, and we know we know the game that it, that it tells the story until the uh, Iron Curtain lifted, uh, but this takes it forward from there. This is by a raising yeah. star in design, uh, David uh, Thompson and Chris Marling from UK. These guys made they did a marvelous job on on creating a game where, which is very simple in terms of gameplay, uh, because it's all about uh, managing your hand. So it's it can, but. It's also, they call it a hand dis dilution game. So your hand cool. is not getting optimized, actually not. It's, it's, 
it's being cluttered with the cars you may not want to have, but you have to have because that's how things un so you've unfold. So you've got to try and make the best of the bad situations yes, that are arriving. Exactly. That's because you know. The, so this is more or less Europe 1991, and whatever happened from that time in Europe is rep on political side is represented through a number of events. Uh, and both plays, we, I call it three power to play your game because it's, <laughs> it's EU and NATO on one side. So you, you're basically playing two organizations. So you got a little bit of a schizophrenia, which, which of the objectives to, to, to pursue. On the other hand, you have Russia, which starts weak after the Cold War, they were kind of weak. And the day they pick up the pace with the installation of the never ending president, you know, they, they, they have like dinner. The uh, person who, who can hold it in one hand, but we are you no. Know, uh, I'm trying to be you know a bit uh, entertaining here, but we are not taking sides here. We're not telling who the good guys are, who the bad guys are. You're letting the players to sit down and out. tell their own yes. story with this. Yes, and and we allow for a lot to happen that we know from the current history. If you go look, number, uh, look at the events, uh, look at uh, where you can lead, what may happen, you may recreate. Uh, reality which is similar, which may not be the same as it is today, but could be, could be similar, could be different. We have, for example, the card that says fracturing the EU. Might be UK, might be somebody else. Might be somebody else. Who knows somebody in this else. world? Yeah. yeah. Could be, could be Turkey leaving NATO, for example. That's another another possibility in the game. So, uh, all in all, 60 minutes to play a very a good dense. speed for a big tactical game. Yeah. yeah. Skill only, there is not a single die roll, despite you seeing the die, dice on the board, they are only markers for influence. So instead of cardboard, flipping cardboard, you have a die and you just change the die to the number of influence you have. So it's very, very neat, very clean in terms of how many components you have, very tense, very... I, I, I love the sound of that, I yes. love the sound of that. It's a, it's a you know... The, Conflict game at its best. <laughs> we, we love conflict games in Palax. So. And so, talking of games that are tense and full of conflict, we have another game over here that's yes, also coming to yes, Kickstarter. Is it yes. coming to Kickstarter as well, I believe? Uh, yeah, but the, we don't know the date yet because it's still in development. But I would estimate it's going to be our either second or third Kickstarter. The second, the, the, the competitive. The competitor to that slot is Successors, the game bar, but that is, we don't, we don't display today. Well, let, let's, let, let's go along this way and see, yeah. have a look at this. So this one is Race to Moscow. Yes. 90, well, 1941, number, Race yeah, to Moscow. Race to Moscow, it is a number 1941, uh, which is basically Barbarossa campaign. So the largest ever military campaign in the history of mankind. And uh, different to other war games, this is not really a war game in a in a sense of fighting. Barbarossa was the logistic exercise, yeah. logistic puzzle. How to make those quite small, actually, German armies fight in the vastness of <laughs> Soviet Russia. <Yeah. laughs> without roads, yeah. without railway, yeah. with the horse-drawn wagons. <laughs> How to do it? Yeah. With the objective being I don't know, a thousand kilometers from the border, right? So they failed. Will you? Ah. Uh, so it's a really nice opportunity to try and rewrite history in some senses, in way, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 then, and when you look at the, you know, we're also answering one of the questions which the designers of that conflict always face. What to do with the weather? Because the Germans were not expecting the weather it, as it was. Everyone's well, defeated by the winter is coming, but they. Yeah. Everyone's defeated by the Russian winter. Napoleon yeah. was the same. Yeah. Well, at least he take. At least he took Warsaw. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, at least he took uh, Moscow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not, 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 not nobody else did, except the, for the Poles in 1612, uh, for which the Russians are not happy until today. Uh, I, I love your historical insights. This is wonderful. <laughs> I can continue for quite long. I don't know how much of an airtime you have. Um, so this, if you look at the board, actually it shows where the Germans are starting. It's, there is nice summer because they did start in, Ju in June 22nd. And then the further they go, the, the worse the weather gets. But uh, contrary to other games where you get into Smolensk and you're trying to, f to figure out what's the weather gonna be, like if you're in Smolensk, it must be mud. <laughs> you know, like if you're in Moscow, it must be winter. Yeah. So you kind of know what, what you're going to face. 
it's so you a do, a, a, do a little bit of planning ahead. Yeah, and stuff. it's like a bit of a scripting, but uh, we had a good history to, to based on, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is logistic, kind of pickup delivery, but not only, but also you, you, you have to optimize, but you also, it is also competitive because it's either of the players to win, last, as it was in a prequel called Race to the Rhine. Um, one more remark, I call it three and a half player game because <laughs> if you have a player who is aspiring, inspiring to play, or maybe not learning, the first timer, you put him in the shoes of Stalin and he will do a great job at the same time learning the game. Uh, so there is no... Uh, That's a really nice way to sort of introduce somebody to something that might be a little yeah, bit heavier yeah, than they might have seen role, before. Yeah. But you can skip that one. You can play with just three, you can play just with two, or you can play just with one. Awesome. And we've put a lot of effort into creating a good automa. So a solitaire player will have actually three different, play, different games. He can play red, white, or black, and there'll be three different games in one box. So there's a good value for everyone. And again, Beware of the ladies, they tend to, <laughs> to the win. In they've, those they've got that tactical streak. I'm always wondering why the women are so good at logistics games. They are, they are. So that is the reality. Basically what we're saying is that they should have really been in charge of everything we've ever done because yeah. it would have just been a lot, of, a lot better. So. I'd be scared to be fighting a woman, you know, a, 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 a woman as a, as a commander of opposing forces. She, she would probably be ruthless, you know. And so the last game we're looking at here is Nanty Narkins. actually with the women on the box. Yeah which was, I think, one of the first, actually, ladies to appear on the game boxes. That's awesome I stuff. That's, yeah, we, I said, look, there is no ladies on the game boxes. But the moment we went to the Kickstarter, and we and they put that beautiful lady with a Victorian London uh, in the background. I live not nearby now. I live not far, not far from London. Oh, cool. And so for me, it's also a way to this. I, I, when I play the game, I also learn a lot <laughs> because there is, 100 plus cards and each of them is a personality from Dickens or other you know stories that did happen in Victorian London um, we have famous personalities we have beautiful buildings we have stories about uh, about you know every, every that minion which was used to be a generic minion in another game very very popular game on different subject but using yes, similar yes, mechanics yes. let's put it this way now all these minions have a role in the game they may be used in a different way, so it's giving more depth, more replayability, and I think players, players who were playing the, the a previous attempt uh, by the same designer uh, would have a lot of fun rediscovering the game because it's totally different now. However, based on the same proven and well-working well -working mechanics. So Nanty Docking is a fantastic. We, we've shown it off a little bit on our, on our website, so over on tabletop.com. You can go and see some awesome stuff about Nanty Narkings. You guys are actually going to be very, very nice, and you're going to be giving away a copy of Nanty yeah, Narkings yeah, yeah, yeah. to one go of our... This one. Go with this one. It should be out for all the backers before end of September. So hopefully by the end of September, we will be able to actually go to retail because we promised uh, the backers that they will be getting their copies before it goes to retail. So rest assured, you won't be getting your copy, you will be getting your copy before it goes to retail. And we hope to be in retail. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to send very, let's see, well, well, we'll see what the production says, but that is the plan. So make sure to comment down below. You can bring yourself a copy of Nanty Narkings for later on in the year, which would be pretty awesome. Phalanx Games has got some amazing stuff coming up. Watch out for these two Kickstarters. They look absolutely fantastic. If you like your war games and a little bit more of that historical edge to things, you've yeah. got some really good stuff coming up. U-Boat as well, man. Looks fantastic. Make sure you go and check out our Let's Play. We'll see if we can get a link into the description or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. Some fantastic stuff coming up here for the rest of the show as well. We're going to be doing live blogs and live streams throughout the whole of the weekend, which is pretty cool. Brilliant. What booth are you guys at here at UK Games Expo? Do you remember? Good question. B205, I'd say. Boom. B205. Boom, there we go. 205, because it's 205. There we go, guys. So make sure you go over and see these guys at their booth, chat to them. Look at all these games, see what you think for yourself as well. Comment down below. We'll be back in the next video very, very soon. Thank you. Bye for now. Cheers.